to say out loud that someone disagree I feel your jealousy and I know I was a dream You think it's hard to say out loud that someone disagree Cause I can't know where I don't know what to wear I don't have any idea What does remind me I'm shining or drowning It's all so that I can't receive it Nobody cares about what am I thinking What am I thinking about I'm trying to say one thing, I'm gonna say one thing I don't care Say out loud that someone disagree You're not my destiny And you shouldn't be with me I think it's wrong that I belong to someone now I'm free I'm stuck in nowhere, I don't know what to wear I don't have any idea What does remind me, I'm shining or drowning It's all so that I can't receive it Nobody cares about what am I thinking What am I thinking about Schedule 12 rounds of boxing for the undisputed Super Bantamweight Championship of the World. And now, ladies and gentlemen in attendance and boxing fans joining us around the world, it's time for the bout you've all been waiting for live on Let Me Know. It's go Introducing to you first on my right, he is the unified Super Bantamweight World Champion fighting out of the red corner, wearing white trunks with red and blue trim, hailing from Zama Kanagawa, Japan. He weighed in at 55.2 kilograms, 121 and three quarter pounds. He is undefeated in his campaign to the ring with a sensational record of 25 wins, no losses, 22 big wins coming by way of knockout. Tonight, making his 21st consecutive world title appearance and seeking his second undisputed crown, here is one of the acclaimed and renowned stars of boxing and pound for pound greats. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the four division world champion, the hard hitting, undefeated, reigning and defending WBC and WBO super bantamweight champion of the world, introducing Nahoya. The Monster Inoue! And his opponent across the ring, the unified super bantamweight world champion fighting out of the blue corner, wearing black trunks with white trim, hailing from Kapatagan, Lanao del Norte in the Philippines. He weighed in at an even 55 kilograms, 121 and one quarter pounds. With a record of 37 wins and three losses, he has 19 wins coming by way of knockout, and tonight he is making his third world title appearance. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the two division world champion and the battle ready current and defending unified WBA and IBF super bantamweight champion of the world, Marlon the Nightmare Papali. Once again, a referee in charge, now to give instructions, Celestino Ruiz. Hey guys, I gave you guys your instruction in the just room. I expect a clean, fair fight, start to finish. Anything right here is low, same thing right here. Anything between these lines right here is low. Good luck. When asked, why don't you take a tune-up, Inoue said, I don't have the mental strength to take tune-ups. I need maximum motivation. And standing across the ring, he has that tonight in the hungry underdog of Marlon Tapales, who's also a two-belt champion.
at Super Bantamweight. We're underway in our main event from the Ariaki Arena in Tokyo, Japan. Karen Batia on the call, joined by Jamel Herring. This is the undisputed Super Bantamweight Championship. Naoya Inoue in the white, red, and blue trunks. Marlon Tapales in the black and white trunks. Already you see that, that hand speed on display from, from Inoue. Right now, Tapaz is making the, um, the mistake of just sitting in front of him too long because you no, know he has explosive power. In any minute, he could just he could just dart out with a, with a solid two shots down the down the pipe. You saw in a way with a quick right hand, and there again, Jamel. It's not just the power; it's the speed that in a way possesses. That's what I mean. You can't just sit there and right in front of him looking at him because right just like shots like that, like I just said. Just, Two shots down the pipe. That's all he needs. Mm. There's Good a left shot. hand for Tapalas that gets in. Again, I like to see Tapalas, uh, you know, especially as as a sapo, continue, you know, move to his keep move to his right, and don't do that because, like I said, he he would have fell into a to a mean uppercut by lunging in like that. Just just move to your light, to your right. And stay off the, you know, stay off the line from Inoue's right hand, because that's the softball killer. Sharp right hand to the body, followed up by a left hand by Inoue. One minute to go in round one of our main event. We see a measured approach here from Tapalis. Remember, Inoue said, I hope Tapalis comes out aggressive. It excites me. That's the most dangerous part. Yeah, and he's mainly, he's known for, his, for mainly his punch output at times. You know, so that's what, that's what Inoue is probably look, looking forward to, of him getting aggressive. But again, I, that, I, that's probably the wrong thing Tapalis wants to do because the more aggressive you get, the more openings you create, you allow, you, you create for your opponents. So, Jamel, we could call that a surprising round one as we see Shingo Inoue, Inoue's father, Naoya's father and trainer. There's a left hand that landed yeah, for Tapalas. Nice it was an interesting game plan, right? Come out a little bit more conservative, a little bit, work on your timing a little bit. You see, you see it right there, that's what I mean. When he, when, he fell, when he fell in, though, and he got caught with that uppercut. I mean, they both, they both, they both shared, they both shared, you know, had, had, had little moments and it's pretty much still a fill out round. But again, I like to see the pilots, you know, just just use lateral movement. Don't you don't want to stand in front of a man that has a dangerous right hand. And on top of that, you also um he has to in this fight, he's gonna have to pretty much guard that liver because you know it's another weapon that in a way can use is that um, you know, that left hook to the body. We've seen many fighters drop by body shots by the dangerous Naoya in a way. Round two underway here. You know, yeah, just you know, upper body movement, little little short steps. You don't gotta you don't gotta exert too much, but you you, you have to do something. You have to do something in front of a you know in front of your an opponent. Even even if it's just subtle movements, you know, feints, stepping over, but you don't what you don't want to do is stand in front of them because like again, we've seen them explode out with a one two and, and you know end fights early with just that combination. And just like that, in a way, landed the one-two there. That was partially blocked by Tapalas, but that's what Tapalas doesn't want to have happen. There's a left hand. Is that that's going to be called a slip? Be interesting to see the replay on that one. It did look like a quick left hand, as in a way follows it up with a right to the body. And again, as you can see, in a way, using that reach advantage, you know, just boxing and keeping everything on the outside. Basically, you probably try to bait him in to fall to fall over that lead foot again 
and before he lets go of that right hand. You see, you see the power's reaching at times with, with, with his jab. And you see, in a way, with that back foot taking a step back, almost trying to get that looping right hand, almost that uppercut to Topalis' head when he leans in. <laughs> Halfway through this round two. <laughs> and look at the feet. Look, look, look where Topalis' feet, feet are at. They're on the inside, and he's he's gonna he's walking straight into that right hand. He, he needs to get his foot on the outside of anyways and keeps turning him. And, then, and that way he, he lines his left hand up to get a chance to get, you know, to get to shoot it down down the pipe on anyway. But when he's falling like that, he's falling into that right hand. See? He's lit, he's he, his head, his head is going right, right in the direction of that right hand. He doesn't want to do that. That's where he doesn't want to be. And, and one thing that gets forgotten a lot with Inouye, we see the highlight reel knockouts, but the defense, and you see the left hand there covering the head. He's known as, he's been called twitchy before, but in a way, it's his ability to parry, to, to disrupt punches coming towards the head. See how he fell in? Round two, similar to round one here. Nice oh, hey, jab, nice jab from Tapalis. Let's take a look at the replay here from round two. Again, he, he, he's getting closer and closer finding his range with that right hand. But that's what I mean. When he falls in like that, he's gonna he's gonna he's gonna fall into the right hand and possibly not see it. And the ones you don't see are the ones that are the ones that put you out. I like say he just needs he just needs to just keep turning them, you know, so just keep turning them and turning them. And eventually try to, you know, align his left hand to get a shot down the middle and, and, and connect on anyway. It's all about it's all about the, the foot battle. But that right there is, is still like no, because you just you just you just a, a sitting target. And here comes anyway. Those punches are partially blocked, but they are backing up to Pollard's. And, you know, anyway, right now he's trying, he's trying to create an opening. He's not, he's not looking for one shot. He's letting his hands go. You know, nice shot, nice shot to the body. He's, he's creating. He's trying to find. He's trying to create openings if he can. If um, Tapas won't give him one, like again, he wanted him. He was probably expecting him to come aggressive, but if he doesn't see that, you got to go to Plan B and you know create openings of yourself. The speed of Inoue. Nice shot, nice shot to the, the body. He brings the, the punch back, the and then he lands one at another angle so quickly. And Jamel, to your point, it looks like in a way is, is baiting Topolis a little bit here. Ooh. Doubling and tripling up the jab is in a way. Nice jab. In a way, displaying the right hand before throwing it. Speed, foot movement. All right, you know, he's not, he's not getting a little bit more looser. Nice, nice body shot from Topalis. Topalis got on the inside there and was able to land to the body. Jamel, is that left. what you'd like to see from Topalis, get, get more on the inside? Yeah, I mean, I mean, again, he can get there, but he's, uh, him having just a slightly shorter reach, he's going to he's gonna have, he's gonna have to box his way in. Nice, nice combination from him. And again, you want to you wanna keep in a way off, you know, off set. You, you don't want him to get comfortable and get set, because the minute you do, he's going to sit on those punches, and that's when the power really starts, that's when he really starts to generate power. Because it all comes from the legs. 
But if you keep backing him up and offsetting him, you can um, you can you can um, prevent him from um, you know shooting back so shooting back at you so quickly. And some good body work in return there from Inoue. We see him having the battle of the foot, of the foot position now. See? Look, look where Inoue is on foot. As long as he keeps his lead foot on the outside of Topaz's foot, he's always going to be in range to load up, to load up on that right hand, just like that again. And that's just good technique. And no and no when you're in the ring. Both men exchange glancing blows to the body. It's been a more measured approach from Marlon Tapalas yeah. here. Mm. Good round, good round for anyway. It seems like he's, he's getting a little bit more looser in here. Fighter, when he's in the ring, he all, he always puts on the show, and he's doing that tonight at the Ariake Arena. And again, you know, Tapaz has to watch out, like, keeping that high guard, because he's dead. Ooh, nice uppercut. You know, it's the same that high guard at times you don't always see everything coming at you. You know, you sometimes like we've seen them fights earlier, um, you know, going around the guard and plus you gotta watch where his elbows at. Meaning meaning um, you know, in a way it can take that he can he can start, you know, targeting under the elbows to the body. So you gotta you gotta start watching out for that as well. That nice body shot from the pause. But in a way that high guard is like blinders in a way you can't yeah. see what's coming around it. And, it, and even, even anyway, you know, saying he put his hands up and what happened? He didn't see the, he didn't see that shot that just broke through the guard. And that's what I mean, that body shot. You can hear that devastating body work by Inouye. Ooh. And I feel like Tapalas is, you know, he's, he's warming up himself. And, and he's not to let his hands go. And now this is when the activity, the activity and the output, you know, begins for Tapalas. Nice work from Tapalas. Like again, he, want, he wants to keep backing up in a way to keep him offset. But the minute he gets like that and, let, and, and lets in a way plant his feet, he's going to generate power. And you have to give credit to Tapalas. Yes, he's the underdog, but he's Nine also five, a yeah. champion in this division. He's not coming in like we've seen previous opponents of Inoue do and not Ooh. trying to engage. <laughs> And again, I like I like I like the game plan that Tapaz is doing though in terms of the body. Nice, nice right hook to the up top. He's he's going to the body that you know to probably take away some of that power up in a way, but but he has to be he has to be careful. He can, don't you don't want to get greedy. And here Ooh. comes Inouye. Two right hands to the body, left hand upstairs. Inoue making his presence known in this round four. Now you see Tapalas is marching forward. Nice body shot right in, right in between the punches. From Inouye. These are hard shots by Naoya Oh, Big left hand to the head. Here comes oh, Inouye, the monster. Mm. Left hand, right hand, Tapalas is down. Five seconds left in this round four. Can Tapalas beat the count? He does. But Naoya in a way scores the knockdown in round four. But that's what we were talking about earlier. You know, in a way, wanted him to get aggressive because he, like I said before, the more aggressive you get, the more the more chances you you create openings for your opponent to counter and punch in between the shots. And that's exactly what we see in that last round. He was trying to fight fire with fire, got aggressive, opened up. Didn't see the shot with the high guard.
So that's that's a very tough task though for Topalis because if he's more aggressive, he's opening himself up to yeah. Inoue's yeah. attack. But you don't want to end up, for example, in the same fight that Paul Butler fought right. that way, and where you're tentative and no, then you get you, but know, it, you end up getting dropped. The thing is, he can he can box with them. You know, he can box with them. He just got you know he he's got to watch it. He got to watch when he places his shots. And, and, and being that high guard hasn't helped him because, again, Inoue's going to come around the guard and hit you on, under the elbows and everything. And Inoue starting Just like that. Five, the way he ended round four. Mm. Devastating shots downstairs, then upstairs. And standing in front of him monster. is not going to help. Standing in front of him is not going to help him. All you're doing is being, becoming a punching bag and a sitting target. That's a scary Now he's getting pieced up. Against Naoya Inoue. Right hand gets through the guard. Another right hand. Mm, nice Big uppercut. uppercut for Inoue. Woo, nice counter from Topalis, though. Another huge body shot. Tell you, he has to protect that body. Because pretty soon, the hands are going to drop, and he's going to come right back up top. And Topalis is a warrior, all-out warrior. He's taking this punishment, and he's coming right back, landing body shots, going to the head. Oh, it's cool, backing up it, it's cool to be a warrior, but you, you got to be smart in there, too. Nice counter. Nice counter from Inoue. Mm, that was nice. That was nice from Topalis. Topalis lands a sneak. Oh, another one. one. Another one. <laughs> Here comes Marlon Topalis. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah. Back and forth, one of the most competitive rounds of the fight so far. Nice. Both men exchanging right hands to the head. Oh. Big uppercut by Inoue. I like what Chapaz is doing at times, but when he throws his shots, he just stands right in front of him, and Inoue comes right back, and that time for a harder shot. So. He needs, to, like, he needs to get in and just take a step over. You can tell those body shots are affecting Tapalas. He motions to the oh! Right. right hand gets through for Inoue. <laughs> the counter. And again, just standing in front of him. He, got, he needs to keep, he, he needs to do something. Faint, turn, something. It's not where you want to be if you're Marlon Tapalas. Oh, nice. That, I love that uppercut from Tapalas, though, because it's breaking the guard of Inoue. Nice, see yes, what I mean? Get yours and go. Head movement. Get under the shots and everything. But don't just stand, don't just stand in front of them after you throw your shots. Or just walk in straight to it with your hands up. Incredible action in this round five. No matter what happens in this fight. So again, like I said, he's doing a lot of good things. I just like to see what it's like to see him tighten his defense. Good jab from Topalis. You'd like to see Topalis tighten the defense and step out of the way. Yeah, get out the way. Ooh, I know a lot of those are boxed, but you can hear you can you just hear that you can hear just the pop on them on the end of those shots from anywhere. Now, anyway, as you can see right now, he's, he's setting up traps because he knows Topaz is being aggressive, so he's taking that he's taking that step back and he's trying to get him catching coming, you know, catch him coming in. Halfway through this round six, Inouye said he hoped Topaz would be aggressive. That that would excite Inouye at that prospect. And, and Jamel, you're explaining why mm. that's going to give Inouye openings. Again, right now, I would like to see the pilots, you know, starting to move, uh, again, again, start lateral movement, keep turning. The pilots abandoned movement shortly and took two to three right hands upstairs. But it's like I said earlier, if you know, oh, he got caught. He's coming out with his hands down. But it's like I said earlier, though, to pot, whenever he pay, pretty much offsets in a way and keeps backing him up, that's when he finds success. When he just stands in front of him and, and tries to go toe-to-toe, -to -toe, that's when he, that's when he um, runs the risk of opening up, getting caught with something big. And there is something big from the monster. 
varied attack downstairs, upstairs. He backing, got to keep backing him up though. You hear Topolis's corner there say, let your hands go. That's what anyway, that's what anyway wants. He wants me, he wants me to do that. Oh. Huge six. Huh? But the pass is he's, he's in this fight. He's in he's definitely in this fight though. Halfway through our undisputed super bantamweight championship. In a way, did score the knockdown in round four. But Jamel, as we've been saying, Marlon Tapalis is having his moments, but you're looking yes. for some in-fight adjustments here. A nice jab. It's nice, good jab. But again, like, I like what he's doing now. You got you to keep backing the monster up. Put that in the glove. Ooh. Huge left and right hand get through for in a way. Again, Tapalis, Tapalis he's answers yeah, yeah, he's, answers. Yeah. He's, he's, he's having his moments. Again, nice, nice. Nice lead jab there. Surprised <laughs> in a way. He been, yeah, he, in a way, he, he, he even impressed him. He gave him his, he gave him his prop. <laughs> nice defense, nice. And way to shoot back from Tapalis. And that time you saw Tapalis use the lead shoulder to he roll it. Past yeah, he rolled his punches. <laughs> he just, he's stepping over. That battle of that front foot that's so common when an orthodox fighter fights a southpaw. Uh, in a way, you know, he found himself reaching. Good jab again with the Tapalis. And one of those adjustments you asked for, Jamel, is being done there. Marlon Tapalis, he doesn't have the high guard with both hands. That right hand is a little bit lower. And I, and I believe you were calling for that because you don't want him to block his own view from punches coming at you. And even, him. yeah, and from that, from that, he can see, he probably can see the punches coming at him a lot better than when he had the high guard in his face blinding him. Even now, he's getting in and out. Now, anyway, it's going to have to probably make some adjustments of his own now because he's he see, he, he seen that he can't get to him with that right hand. So he's probably going to have to, you know, step. You know, he can't just look for one or two shots. And you see Tapaz is catching the shots with that, with that, with that left, with his left hand now. And he's rolling. He's, you see, he's turning. And he's, ha and he's having moments. He's probably been winning, he's been winning the round. He's got caught. The right hand there. <laughs> just got caught though, the but. third was the most powerful. It definitely got to Paulus' attention. Mm, nice shot for Paulus. Paulus with a nice left hand to close out round seven. More, more than one or two shots because that's what he's waiting. That's what um, the Paulus is waiting on now and to roll up those shots and come back with a counter. Underway. Last round, we heard referee Celestino Ruiz say to both fighters, "Watch your feet." And it's been a, it's been a battle of geography the yeah. whole night. Right? See? You know? Nice jab, nice jab from the pilot. And you see now with the pilot, he's got, you know, he's, he's, he's changing levels with, with, with his arm, with his body, meaning that he's bending his knees, he's got the body movement, he's turning. He, the jab is finding more success. Now, you know what I'm saying, he's catching anyway, falling at times. And when he does, you know, he, he, he has that free hand, let it go. See, you hear Sean Gibbs saying, that hand's free, let it go. Oh. He has to be careful on the inside, because you don't want to get greedy and, and forget about your defense, because that's when you get hit. 
in between the shots, you, you, you don't see it coming. But he even he even has in a way, you know, he's thinking he's thinking more. It's more of a chess match now. It's not. It, it was it, early in the fight. It was a it was a, coming a slugfest. That's what you want to see in an undisputed fight. Two fighters making in-fight adjustments. And Marlon Tapalas has been able to find nice some success here in the middle rounds. And he's found he's found a lot of success when he catches in a way, you know, backing out. Because that's what I mentioned earlier. I feel like you have to keep you have to keep the monster on off his, on, on the on the back foot. But when he, when he's coming forward, that's when he's really dangerous. And if you sit in front of him, he's gonna let it, he's gonna let his hands go. Nice from Tapalas again. That left hand got in there from Tapalas. And again. It's also, Jamel, you mentioned Tapalas lowering that right lead hand. It also allows a different angle for him to throw the jab that yeah. way may not be expected. No, like, like I said, he'll dip, but he'll shoot the jab upward, you know, and, and it'll catch, it'll catch um, an only off guard. Nice. Big right hand there for anyway. He threw, he threw the shot where he felt like where he felt that where um Tapaz was gonna be at. He knows that though he's gonna dip, so he threw it right down there and caught him and caught him on the mark. Nice counter from the in, in way. Doing a lot more than what most probably expected him to do, even even this late into the fight. But he's a champion, so you gotta you gotta give him that respect. He's a champion. Round nine underway, and that's exactly what we hoped for and expected from Tapalas, even though he has two bats, Ooh. came in as an underdog, has shocked the world before. I mean, you see the, I see, you see the small adjustment from Inouye, like, he's doubling up that right hand. See, just, again, he's doubling up that right hand. Because Tapalas, he probably thinks Tapalas thinks he's going to stop that one right hand, and he'll double up. Nice one, too. Shot from Tapalas. The left hand got through for Tapalas. Nice. Nice combination. And right now, this distance, this pace, right, is working for Tapalas. Mm -hmm. That's where the monster dangers at when he, when he starts moving forward. So in a way does that. Gotta back him up. Keep backing him up. And keep turning. Right now he's lying, he's lined up to that to, to in a way his own right hand. See, he just got caught. He got lined up. Gotta keep turning him. And there you see Tapal is getting on his right foot on the outside of Inouye's lead foot. But he has, but he has to watch, I know, he has to watch it. He, even because when he shoots that jab forward, he still, he shoots right, he, he falls right on the inside of um, Inouye's feet. Like Sean, you hear Sean Gibbons saying, you gotta back him up. But when you sit there like that, you you always get you always get pieced up all, all night. Especially when you have the monster landing one two. Some of these are getting through the guard, and there's some good body work. We have to give Marlon Tapalas credit. Not only heart of a warrior, heart of a champion, but also yeah. investing to that body, and he's been going to that all night. And jab from Tapalas. Tapalas goes back to that high guard. Yeah. 
Two jabs and one big right hand for Inoue at the close of round nine. Good body shot from Inoue under, under those elbows. You know, I get, you see, you see the replay where he did get he did get cracked with the right hand. So he probably felt that he needed to put both his hands up. But again, he can't see anything. And every time he does that, in a way, in a way, he has to let his hands go. Good left hand. Round ten from the Ariaki Arena in Tokyo, Japan. Undisputed super bantamweight crown on the line. In a way, certainly having success, but Marlon Tapales showing that he belongs in this ring. He belongs with an opportunity for himself to become undisputed. Making in-fight adjustments. At times, frustrating in a way. And you know, you notice at times when he puts his hands up like that, in a way would throw a shot and then hook, ooh. Big right hand there, backed up to Tapales. And can he beat the count? He's not going to make nope. it up. Naoya, in a way, makes history. The legend of the monster continues to grow. In a way, becomes only the second man to be undisputed in multiple weight divisions in the modern era. History made here in Tokyo. And I'll tell you what happened. Like he thought he thought he had he thought he was defensive, had his both his hands up, and anyway broke right through the guard and hit him right on the chin. But when he was when he was changing levels and he you know he was staying low, up and down, up and down, he would actually he was actually protecting himself a lot more better than that. Again, when you put your hands up at times, sometimes you can just become a, a punch bag and fighters are gonna just let their hands go. And that's exactly what he did. Incredible achievement for Naoya Inoue, historically great. A champion in four different weight divisions and now can say he's undisputed. Was undisputed at bantamweight, now undisputed at super bantamweight. This is rarefied air for Naoya Inoue. And we have to give credit to Marlon Tapales. He fought a measured game plan early. He made adjustments, but at the end of the day, the monster was just too much, you know. Oh, absolutely. But again, like I said, give him credit. He stepped up to the plate. Um, most probably didn't even think he would have he done as good as he did tonight. That big right hand for Inouye. Number 10, a referee in charge, Celestino Ruiz, reaches the count of 10. He is the winner by way of knockout.